So I wanted to do kind of a follow-up video of the video from the airfield to maybe touch over some of the stuff that I went over kind of quickly in the first video. Okay, so if you wanted some extra information, then here you go. And I'll start with this camera. This camera is a Mobius camera. You may have seen them. They usually don't look like this. Uh, I took a regular Mobius camera and put it in one of these Mobius camera boxes. You can see that's where the card goes in right there. So that it would fit on a regular gimbal. That's some Velcro right there. Anyway, and the way it works is to hook into the system, it's got a video output that plugs into the side. And now, any video that you shoot when the camera's on goes through the chipset in the back to overlay the telemetry and then comes to you via the Fat Shark goggles. Now, these have a built in receiver on them. There's a channel button, there's eight channels. The way you know which channel to go to is when everything's plugged up, you just hit the up or down button until you see an image, and that's the channel you stay on. And if you don't change the channel, then it's going to stay on that channel. So just leave these buttons alone. Okay? Now, in the other video, I was talking about return to launch. And I sort of went through that kind of fast. Here's the way return to launch works. So that you don't have to keep up too bad with the uh, battery voltage or where you're flying, um, you, you have fail safes. And the fail safes are there so that... Basically, here's an example. If I've been flying for 10 or 11 minutes, um, depending on how I'm flying, then you may trip a battery failsafe. A battery failsafe will say, hey, the battery's low, and it will actually take the copter up to 82 feet, just in case there's any trees in the way, and then it will fly back home and land itself. And that's a really handy feature, because in the old days with quads, I had to uh, you know, put a set of timer and come home and land and hope that I had enough space. Now what I tell people to do though is make sure that sometime around the uh, the 10 minute mark you're headed back home because you don't want to be really far away when a return to launch in, in, uh, is invoked because it, it could take a few minutes to get back to you. So around, so until you're used to it, um, you know, keep in mind that around 10 minutes or so you want to start coming back home. Now uh, also along that same lines, if you're flying and you get out of range of the transmitter, which is most likely not going to happen, but if it were, or if your um, transmitter batteries went dead, which could happen, or if you physically turn your transmitter off, then the copter will stop what it's doing and it will initiate a return to launch, once again go up to 82 feet, come back home and land. That way, once again, if there's obstacles in the way, hopefully you're clearing them. Now it's going to be up to you to kind of survey the area and make sure you don't fly behind stuff that's really tall. But that goes without saying. Now, here's the radio. Now, one thing also I need to show is when you're flying in position hold, which is how I suggest people fly, and that is you turn on the copter, plug up the battery, arm it like I showed in the video for three seconds, and if you touch the gas, you'll see that the propeller's been, that means it's armed. Okay? You flip this switch. That's position hold. Now, everything in the middle is zero. Okay? So if you want it to go up, you go up, and then back down to middle. And that holds its position, its, its height. I want it to go up another 20 feet, I go up. It goes up another 20 feet, I stop. And that's zeroed out. If I want it to come down, I go down. Okay? In stabilize mode, which is this switch here, you don't have the advantage of the GPS. So this is zero, this is up, and basically when you're flying it, you keep track of your gas. If it needs gas, you give it gas. If it doesn't need gas, you let it off, and if you want to land, you come down to zero, just like a traditional uh, helicopter would fly. I like position hold, that switch right there. Keeping the stick centered. That way, if I get into a weird spot, if I don't know my orientation, if anything happens, I just make sure that sticks in the middle and I let off and it holds where it's at like I showed you in the video. Now if you want to make it come back home and land, say uh, you're tired of flying, you can physically turn it off and it will come home and land. Uh, I recommend that you do it, you take off from an area that is grass, maybe, <laughs> just so that you know, you're not landing on too hard of concrete uh, and that it's flat. It's, you know, make sure it's flat.
because uh, it's hard for these things to land on an angle. So, but that just that's just common sense right there. Okay. So uh, here's the battery charger it comes with. It charges at six amps, so that'll charge one of these batteries really quick. Here's the Fat Shark goggles with the uh, built-in uh, 5.8 gig receiver. And also, I wish that I could get a video image of these, like with the camera. It's just they don't really show up real well. But in in the image, you get a lot of information. In the top left of it, or I'm sorry, in the middle left is how many satellites you're picking up. I usually don't fly until I see six satellites. In the top right of the image, you will see things like your altitude, how high you are, plus how far away you are. That is super important. So you know if, hey, I'm 600 feet away and I'm 300 feet up, you know, you've got that information given to you, you know. And, uh, and then here's the batteries. These are 5,200 milliamp batteries. Like I said, flight time is around, is more than 10 minutes. However, around 10 minutes, you're really going to want to start coming back home. Now, uh, also, this has got a battery monitor that it plugs into. When these batteries are fully charged, they'll register 12.5 volts, and uh, then they'll come down from there. But this battery monitor is your secondary failsafe. If that thing starts beeping, it means you have literally one more minute to fly before you are out of juice. So if you ever hear that beeping, no matter where it's at, you want to go ahead and land. Okay? Keep that in mind. A lot of this just comes with getting used to the quad, flying it easy. Uh, here's some examples I tell people. When, you're, when you want to fly, go outside, look around your house or wherever you're flying at. Make sure that there's no huge obstacles that you're having to fly over. Keep it close. You know, Don't go too far out on your first few flights and get used to it. See how much flight time you've got. There is a timer that's inside the goggles that's telling you from the moment you start it up how long you've been flying. So you can, It's on the right side in the middle. So you can look at that and kind of keep track of your flight time and uh, around 10 or 11 minutes start coming back home. You, you will most likely land before it engages a battery failsafe. But if it does, if you're really far out and it engages a battery failsafe, then you're okay because it'll still just come home and land. Um, let's see, what else is there? So that's the switch for position hold versus stabilize. You arm it and stabilize, which is this way to disarm it. You go all the way down into the to the uh, left and that'll disarm it and then like I said fly around mostly in position hold until you get used to it all of this has been pre-configured and pre-set up okay this Mobius camera films fantastically I used to have a GoPro and I like this better oh one other thing I wanted to touch on quadcopters are complicated okay so inevitably when you're shopping for one of these they show you a picture that shows everything on the screen and it looks great and then you read in the fine print and it doesn't have everything you want. So, for example, you may see a quadcopter. It costs X amount of money on eBay and it looks good and it's got a picture of everything but then you read in there and it's like, oh, there's no camera or there's no gimbal. Okay, But um, in this case, to make it easy, this includes everything you need. You have your camera, you have your gimbal, Instead of giving you a wall charger that takes four hours to charge, this is a really powerful charger that's very flexible and will charge all kinds of batteries. Okay, um, A lot of times, if the quadcopter that you see has a camera and a gimbal, it may have no way for you to see what they see. You know, It may just record, and you're just kind of flying blind hoping that you're getting what you're wanting to. The Fat Sharks give you a real-time image of exactly what the camera sees, not... A secondary camera up here, maybe, that's always pointing straight out, and you're hoping to see what this sees. This gives you an exact view of what you're recording, um, which is really important. Uh, also, the two batteries are handy so that you've got, you know, one as a backup if you want to go out and fly. Oh, as far as flying quality, as far as record quality, I find that, you know, this is a flying camera rig. So, therefore, if it's really windy, you have shaky video. It's just the way it is, no matter what anybody tells you. My best video comes on days when there's not any wind, or a lot of times I fly closer to uh, uh, 5 or 6 o'clock at night when there's still sunlight out, but the wind's died down, or in the morning, you know. You can check and, uh, and experiment, see what gives you the best quality video. I have gotten really good video 
when it's uh, when when the wind is still because then it's a very stable platform. In the first video, it was very windy. You can hear it in the mic, and the quadcopter will fly just fine. It'll keep itself where it needs to be. However, it makes the video shaky. So keep in mind your best quality video is going to look uh, well. Your best quality video is going to be gained when uh, when the wind is or or when the air is most still. So I hope this helps you out. Uh, feel free if you've got questions, you know, shoot me an email on eBay or uh, any way you want to get a hold of me, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you've got. But I think this is a fantastic package that uh, uh, I've used it. I built it. Uh, I sort of put it all together and made sure that it flew right and did its job well. And so it is technically used, but it has not been used very much. It's, it's very little use. These batteries, they're pretty much brand new, okay? And um, these fat sharks, I've had them for a little while, but not very long. Um, so I think this would make a, anybody a, a really good package, and I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good day. Bye. almost forgot one of the most important parts. This is the box that it comes in, and uh, it's actually got a handle on it. So... This gives you, where the other guys are charging you, I don't know, a couple hundred dollars to get a package to hold everything. It comes in a package for you to hang on to everything. Uh, this GPS antenna unscrews. If I can get it. And it folds over. And then this box closes up and I just keep it in the back of my car so that whenever I want to... Uh, to uh, fly or go anywhere to fly, I just take it with me. Uh, there's cutouts back here for the two batteries. There's the charger right there. Here's the goggle case. There's the wires for the charger. So it's got a little bit more space for you to put a few more accessories. But this box is super handy. So, uh, and like I said, it's included. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that.